Good morning, and thank you for tuning in to the third webinar of the ninth Annual Dallas Hunger Summit, hosted by the Dallas Coalition for Hunger Solutions. During the last two sessions, we discussed the definition of food justice and dug deeper into the additional issues that food insecurity creates in our communities today. I want to talk more about what is being done on the policy side in the fight against hunger and how COVID has played a role. The pandemic has affected the lives of so many here in North Texas region in so many different aspects. One aspect is the access to food for those who are less fortunate. During the initial COVID outbreak, my colleagues in the house and I turned our attention to the children that without ability to attend school in person, many children here in North Texas and across the country would lose access to free or reduced cost lunch. Therefore, many of these children would go hungry as that one meal is too often the only reliable meal they received on a daily basis. Next, I thought about the major economic impact the pandemic would have on individuals working in the retail and service industries. These industries already had a low average income. With new stay-at-home orders implemented, employees in these industries would go on to face a hardened struggle to put food on the table for themselves and their families. That is why House Democrats and I supported efforts to provide the USDA with massive flexibility when it comes to food distribution during the COVID relief package negotiations. The Families First Coronavirus Response Act included waivers for several meal programs administered by USDA, including the National School Health Program, Child and Adult Care Food Program, and the Summer Food Service Program, among others. The bill also waived federal work requirements for the SNAP in-person applications for WIC and established the pandemic EBT program. Despite these measures taken by the Congress in March, we saw how great the need was for food assistance, especially here in North Texas. That is why I have continued to urge House and Senate leadership to include provisions in future relief packages to help alleviate some of the pain our community is feeling. This includes including the minimum SNAP benefit from $16 to $30, universally increasing SNAP benefits by 15% and extending waivers on work requirements. Though the pandemic has forced us all into a virtual setting, it has its upsides. Working through Zoom has presented us with the opportunity to hear from voices from around the country. Our first guest and one of my closest colleagues in Congress is Congresswoman Marsha Fudge. Congresswoman Fudge represents the 11th District of Ohio and is the chairwoman of the House Committee on Agriculture's Nutrition Oversight and Department Operations Subcommittee. It is thanks to her leadership and tireless efforts that we're able to enact policies that help millions of Americans put food on the table during the pandemic. Please welcome my good friend, Congresswoman Fudge. <laughs> 